So I ended that last video by introducing the dot product, and I, I looked at what happens when we multiply a horizontal vector by a vertical vector doing the dot product. Here I want to do um, a few things. I want to start off by looking at, well, what is an actual practical use case for the dot product? Um, second, when we have these matrices of data or, or data frames, you're often going to see people adding a column that just contains a bunch of ones. And I'm going to show why that's useful when we're trying to have various linear models. And then finally, I may do things like this. Instead of going vector by vector, what happens if I want to go matrix by vector? Okay, so I've created my data frame here. And what it has is some information about um, houses. You know, how many beds do they have? How many baths do they have? What year was it built in? And then based on this uh, information about houses, I want to have some sort of model that can predict how much a house would be worth if I sold it on the market. And, and so what I've done is I've built this little predict function here and uh, we'll pass in a house. And you can see I have a note here that the way I'm passing that in is as a panda series, right? So I can pull out one of these rows as a series. And, um, and then what am I doing? Well, I've assigned some sort of value um, to each of the features. You know, each bedroom, I guess, is worth $42,000. Uh, each bathroom is worth $10,000. Um, and then uh, I, I guess uh, as the house gets newer, right? Well, every year that it's newer, it's worth another $1,670. Uh, uh, and then I have this, um, this kind of constant I'm subtracting off all of them, right? So, well, let me see how I could actually use this. Um, I have my houses here, and I could grab that first house. I could say something like dot i location zero. I could see the first house has two bedrooms, uh, one bathroom, and it was built in 1985. And if I wanted to, I could say predict price. Right, so I, I could do that, and I can see, okay, well, that house is worth $196,000. Uh, the next one has an extra bedroom, and it's slightly newer. Let's see how, how that one fares. Hey, that house is worth two hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars, and good. And this is kind of a very common uh, linear model that people will will use. And, and of course, the real trick that we're going to eventually get to in this course is how do we actually figure out what what these numbers are? Um, you know, there's going to be learning we're going to be learning machine learning models for uh, determining these numbers. Um, you could also imagine maybe some real estate agent sat down and kind of had their opinion and built the model. That's not necessarily a bad way. Uh, to create a model as long as you actually do some evaluation and show that it works pretty well. Okay, so this kind of thing is going to be uh, something that will work great for uh, linear algebra operations, in particular the dot product. Right, so this is our practical use case. Because, well, what does the dot product do? It does multiple, a bunch of multiplications, and then it adds all the results. And so, so let me see if I can try to work towards this. Um, I think what I will want to do is take all of these things, these numbers, and put those in, uh, to some kind of NumPy array. So I'm gonna say NumPy.array, and uh, I'm gonna put these values in. So I'll say like 42.3, 10, and 1.67. And I may capture that in a variable. And um, ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna have um, a vector uh, dot product these coefficients. And this vector is really going to be corresponding to a house. And so remember, if I want to get this kind of operation where I'm kind of multiplying two values together, multiplying two values, so on, and then finally adding all those up, well, this second vector uh, better be vertical, right? If I want to collapse this all down to one value, that last one better be vertical. And so I need to have some sort of reshape here. And so remember that when I reshape, I'm saying how many rows do I want? How many columns do I want? I know I want exactly one column to make it vertical, and then I can just say negative one to give me however many rows necessary, and I have that right there. Okay, so that's good. How, how do I actually get um, how do I actually get uh, a house out of that uh, out of that data frame? Right before I was doing this thing, um, it turns out that um, it, it turns out that uh, data frames are built on top of NumPy. So I could do something like this. I could say something like houses.values. And I get a nice um, NumPy array just like this. And so I'm going to capture this in another variable called x. 
And just a little bit of notation here, um, I'm making X uppercase because it's going to be a full matrix. And I'm making C lowercase because, well, that's just one, um, it's just one uh, um, vector, right? I, I guess technically it's a matrix, but I I'm basically treating it like a vector. Okay, so let me see if I can pull some houses out of there. Uh, I could do something like this. I could say X, and then I have to say like a row slice and a column slice. And I'll start with the column slice because that's easy, right? I want to grab everything in the column. So I'm going to say, you know, let's let's get all that. And then I have to pull out a row here. So I could say something like this to get that first one. Right, I want to get this right here. Now, now one issue with this is, right, if I look at the shape of it, it it's one dimensional, right? I only have one value in that um, tuple. And, and I was really saying that I would like to treat this as a, horizontal vector, right? So so really what I should do is instead of just pulling out the value at one, I should actually take a slice from zero to one. Uh, what is exclusive? So I'm only gonna get data from that zero throw, uh, but this is gonna actually give me something that has the two dimensional thing, whereas this was one dimensional. You see that difference? I'm gonna do that, that's two dimensional. And, uh, and I can say, well, that's my house zero. And uh, I can peek at that. And so let me actually try this down here, this code I've been working towards. I can say house zero times C, and I get something that is um, absurd, right? I think that all of this was in thousands, so it's like a $3 million house. And, and you can see what I forgot, right? I forgot that I have this constant that I subtract off. This You could think of it as like an intercept. So, so maybe what I should do is I should create uh, not only my C up here, but I should have B. Right, that uh, that intercept equals negative three two one three, and then when I do this little operation down here, I could say plus b, and that will work if I if I rerun this. All right, so that works, and then does this match up with what I had before? Uh, one hundred and ninety six thousand. Let me try running this again for house zero. It does. I get exactly the same value. I mean, here it's bundled up a little bit inside of these NumPy arrays, but I'm getting the exact same thing. And you can see how much more concise it is, right? Instead of having this big, complicated thing, I could just have this simple little expression, right? Uh, row, dot product, and then my coefficients, and then add in this intercept, and, and I could basically do this whole thing. And, and that comes, becomes more important as we have bigger data frames, right? I mean, a three-column data frame uh, is pretty simple for what we'll see, right? I might have 20 columns that I'm having this model run over. So, so let me try the other one. So I'm going to get my other houses like so. Uh, maybe what's the best way to do this? Um, I'm just going to paste this four times. And uh, I have my four houses, house one, house two, house three, one, two, three, great. And now I could actually, if I wanted to, I could uh, print off the values for all of these different houses, right? So let me do that. So I'm going to paste that. Like so, let me get all the values. And, and I realize I'm doing this kind of a cumbersome way, but the reason is that I want you to appreciate when I show you the elegant way to do it, why we'll do it that way, right? So I, I basically here, I'm getting all these different values for the different houses. Now, now let me show you a trick, right? So remember that, remember that I had all my data here in X, right? And when I'm looking at say H0, H0 is just an individual row of this. Right, and, and if I multiply that individual row by my coefficients, then, then I'm going to get a single number out just like this. And so there's actually a shortcut here, and that is if I say I want to multiply my whole, I want to multiply my whole uh, matrix by my um, by my coefficients. Well, there you go. It's going to go down and do all of them, and then of course at the end I would have to actually um, add B, right? So I could do that, and you can see that I could get all of these same values here in this one column, just like I did uh, before, right? It's very elegant, right? 
And so, so what is really happening, right? Uh, when I say x dot product c, it's taking the dot product of the first row with c, and it puts it here. And then it takes the dot product of the second row with c, and puts that here. The dot product of the third row with c, puts that here. And you just kind of keep on drawing, and I can do that very quickly. Now, you, you might imagine that I could have also done that work with a loop, and that would have gotten the same result, absolutely. But doing it like this, where I'm trying to tell the computer in one step, here are all the different multiplications I have to do. Uh, depending on your hardware and maybe the packages on top of it, I have some opportunity to speed up. Um, modern CPUs often have various features that let them do multiple things at the same time. Um, and so if I'm doing this, if I'm kind of telling the computer everything I want to do instead of just giving it one piece at a time, right? A loop gives it one piece of work at a time. Uh, if I give it all at once, then often the computer will find ways to do it more efficiently and write my code is going to be a lot faster. Okay, so, so we're doing pretty good here. Um, one of the things that uh, I might want to think about trying to improve is um, why do I have to have this separate B? Is there a way to avoid that? And, uh, and the answer is yes, there is. And... I'll show you. So I'm trying to grab all this right here. Um, what if I just wanted to roll B directly into this? So I say something like, you know, B, I put this negative 3, 2, 1, 3 that I had here. I'm going to try to do this, right? So I have these things. These multiply my columns in my data frame. And then I have this coefficient. And, and so my problem right now is when I have this X, the sizes aren't going to match up, right? Because I'm multiplying this column by the first row, and I have three values in the row, four values in the column. So, so if I try something like this, if I say x, and then I take the dot product with c, it, it complains, right? There's an input size mis mismatch, right? I have to make sure the number of column, well, I have to make sure the number of values in, in, in this row match the number of values in my c column, which is, sorry, that's the c column. Okay, so well, what, what do I want to really do? Um, this last value here that I'm putting in my uh, coefficients, I don't want to multiply that by a variable. I want to multiply it by one. And, and so the trick that people will do is this. So this was my data frame. Oh, where is my data frame? It was houses. There's my data frame. And what we'll really do is we'll kind of add this fake column that just contains ones. And the only purpose is that this negative 3, 2, 1, 3 can multiply it. So, so I could just say something like this. Maybe I'll call it like constant or something like that uh, equals 1. I have that there. And uh, great. So I just added this thing right here. And so then what I can do is I can just pull out my x again. I can say x equals houses.values and peek at that. And, uh, and now if I want to, I could just say x dot product c, and I can really, you know, I'm capturing my model in this c vector, but I can compute uh, uh, all of these predictions for the whole thing. And, and what's really beautiful about this is I could uh, put this all right back in to my data frame. I could say something like houses, and then maybe take a new uh, column called price estimate equals this, and then I could look at my houses and... Uh, and I would see this right here, right? So this is great, right? So I could see the price estimate for all of these with a very simple operation, right? I mean, the real trick is just, well, how do I, how do I um, kind of pull out that C value, right? How do I figure out what numbers go in there? And we're going to be eventually talking more about that. So to recap, right, what is the use case for the dot product? It's awesome for linear models like this, where I want to multiply some coefficients on a bunch of variables. Um, sometimes uh, to make it simpler to have not a separate coefficients in B variable, if I want to put everything in C, then the, the trick is that I will add a separate column with just ones. And then finally, uh, doing a matrix dot product by a vector is very useful, right? Because I can apply uh, my coefficients to every row at the same time, and I can very quickly uh, compute those new estimated values. Okay, so I will end there.